Hello everyone and welcome to another fat boy loss recipe video. In this video I'm showing you how to make keto brownies. Man, keto brownies, this recipe is legit good. Like, uh, look here, I'll show you. It's, it's so good. It's so good. I'm going to be showing you how to make it. They're really easy to make. Uh, you basically just need a square tin and all of the ingredients in this video. If you don't have any of the ingredients in this video, then make sure you stick around to the end because I'm going to give you some really handy substitutions. If you don't have some of the ingredients and you go, Ooh, Oh no, I, I want to make these brownies, but I, I don't have that particular ingredient. Don't worry. I'm going to show you at the very end, stick around. So let's get started. Okay, so question number one, I don't have xanthan gum, what do I do? <laughs> That's totally fine. If you don't have xanthan gum for this recipe, then, you know, I mean, xanthan gum is optional all the time, really. Like, unless you're doing bread or unless you're doing something that actually needs it, then xanthan gum in this recipe isn't 100% necessary. So feel free to just leave that one out. You can replace it with guar gum. You can put gelatin in there. If you're going to substitute uh, xanthan gum with gelatin, then I would recommend doing it a double amount. So instead of using half a teaspoon of xanthan gum, I would use a teaspoon of gelatin. Um, but you know, really, it's probably not 100% necessary. Uh, I do love the fact that xanthan gum gives it a really good texture. That's totally up to you. So question number two, don't overcook it. <laughs> How long do I keep it in the oven? Just don't overcook it. It doesn't matter. If you pull it out at 20 minutes and it's really gooey and you can't do anything with it and it just wobbles everywhere, then maybe put it back in the oven for another five minutes. But really, don't overcook it because that's where the fudginess comes from. That's where once it cools down, once all the ingredients come back to room temperature and you put it in the fridge, after then you'll be able to slice it. Now, ideally when you slice through it, get a big knife and make sure the knife is hot. When you're cutting through it, you don't want you don't want to take all of the ingredients with you because this is going to be like a really super fudgy brownie. Um, and so if you have a hot knife, then it'll go straight through. Or you can just make sure that you cut along the top and pull it out instead of going all the way through. So that's definitely uh, one big tip there. Tip number three, uh, can I use cream cheese or nut butter in this? So a lot of other brownie recipes use either cream cheese or nut butter to get that fudginess, but you know, in actual fact, you can just undercook the brownie and it gets that fudgy flavor as well. But you can add cream cheese, you can add nut butter, that's totally fine. Um, I would suggest using almond butter, or if you are nut free, then maybe using tahini, sesame seed, uh, unhulled or hulled, it doesn't really matter. Um, if you are going to use cream cheese, then I would use a quarter of a cup. Same with any uh, almond paste or you know peanut butter or whatever, you use about a quarter of a cup. That will give you like an ultra fudgy brownie. And you might have to increase the cooking time by about 10 minutes. That's the only suggestion I have. Um, but tip number four, can I make this nut free? And I hinted at it a little bit just before when I talked about almond for sesame seed, but if you don't want to have nuts, if your kids are nut free, if your school is nut free, if your world needs to be nut free, then just substitute it with sesame seeds. They are fantastic. If you don't have sesame seed flour, just get some sesame seeds, grind them down to a flour, and that's flour. That's, that's how easy it is to make sesame seed flour one-to-one -one relationship with almond flour. 
Really simple, that's how you make it nut free. If you do have any more questions, make sure you leave them in the comments below because I love answering your questions and making sure that you have all the details before you get going. But again, thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Aaron Day. I uh, love creating keto desserts like this. It's one of my big passions. Um, and I love trying to create them as easy as possible. So if you found this recipe really easy, make sure you share it with a friend. You can go ahead to the recipe link down below and get started right away.